All right. All right, I'd like to welcome everybody to the Tuesday, August 20th, 2024, Warrington Board of Alderman meeting. If you would, please rise and say the Pledge of Allegiance with us. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next will be a public hearing on the tax rate. Good evening, Mayor and Board. <clears throat> In relation to our property tax rate for the city of Warrington, I would like to make part of the public record, the municipal code by reference, and the public hearing notice that was published in the Warren County record on August 8th, 2024. Revised property evaluations for 2024 received from the county clerk reflect an increase of $4,738,622 in new construction, an increase of $4,573,729 in real estate valuations, of that an increase of $164,893 in personal property tax valuations. The proposed tax rate based on the revised property tax valuations are 0 0.2930 per 100 valuation for general revenue and 0.1735 per 100 valuation for parks and recreation. The total tax rate is 0.4665 per 100 valuation. Proposed rates will result in approximately $647,702 in revenue. General fund of $406,809 and the park fund at $240,892. The total budgeted revenue for this year are $655,464, which actually results in a deficit of $7,762 below budget. Any questions? No, qu no questions, I don't think. Just, very much. The increase is just, just to make that known. <coughs> They're state regulated, basically. Right. Correct. For the most part. Yes. Okay. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Next will be con consent agenda. We have the regular and closed meeting minutes from August 6, 2024, the rock bid awarded to Bobby Holscher Trucking, the low bid, and the auto repair <coughs> bid awarded to Lewis Family Garage, the only bid. All right, I'll entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda items as submitted. So moved. Second. Motion made by Alderman Quarter, second by Alderman Schultz. Roll call vote. Alderman Lang? Yes. Alderman Schultz? Yes. Alderman Crump? Yes. Alderman Quarter? Yes. Alderman Cullum is absent. Alderman Rowmaker? Yes. Motion passes five to zero. Next will be public comments. We just ask that <coughs> if you step forward to the podium, state your name, we'll give you five minutes to speak. Um, and we'll maybe have a conversation, maybe not. But either way, if we just ask that you please state your name when you come to the podium. <coughs> you can come up, Jane. Yeah. He's doing a presentation later. Oh, okay. I'll be quick. Okay. Jane Kelly, Warrington, Warren County, Fragile and Homeless. Um, <clears throat> the little blue box, it's the food box that's situated on the city property between the city police and the, and the city hall. Mm -hmm. yes. I think it says feed your neighbors. Do you, does everyone know, yeah, I know the little know. box? I just came to ask some questions. Has there been a complaint? Has there been any incidents? Has there been any notification that um, the agreement that was, I believe, purchased with a thousand from the community development block grant for the community? So <clears throat> I use that all the time. Okay. Like I refer people there. It hasn't had food for a couple of months. So, so what I would like to ask, without starting rumors, I, if right. there is a change 
in, in anything with that. If we need a new person, a new agency, I think St. Joachim and Ann, I talked with Elaine at the health department. I know I had requests from 4-H and Cub Scouts to participate in putting appropriate food in that box, but I don't, I'm just asking that the city not remove the box. I, we're not talking about it. Is it considered city property or is it NECAC property? It was actually, that was actually, the city built that box. It was not done by a grant, and NECAC was in <coughs> agreement that they were going to fill that. The city doesn't really have anything to do with that. So the, so it could be removed by NECAC then. Is that true? Well, um, we, we city, built it. The city the built city it. Built we just, the box. agreement was with NECAC to fill it with food. And we would have it, and within, I think, camera distance in case there was damage Correct. or anything else. That's why we put it on the property, is to be able to keep an eye on it so nobody would damage it. Okay. The so city does not fill that box. No, I understand. So you're, was, you're asking if other if other people that you have organized if they can fill it. Well, I have other people lined up that would. Okay. Kind of what I heard at a meeting was that NECAC planned to remove it, and I was, and that oh. again, I just, I'm. Yeah, it no, is city. It is on city property, right. and so NECAC that's all I came tonight is just to say, please don't have it. Re well, let it be removed, to. and let's look at another. I don't. Are there any particular requirements you would have on another agency if they work with the health department on proper items? And I don't think so. I mean, I, I don't think we had just, anything. It was something we did want to be able to do for the community for people that not didn't want to. Didn't want people to feel pressure, but yet we didn't want it damaged. So that's why we put it in an area where well, I think it's within a camera. Fantastic distance. location. I, yeah, you no. know, I refer people to it all the time, and yes. I've been hearing that it was empty. I didn't quite understand until today. Uh, yeah. It's like, oh, so that's no longer. Does anybody else have any issue if if she was to be able to organize somebody else to be able to put no. food in it no, and make sure great. it's stocked? Awesome. Okay. Yeah, that's I don't, I don't I see any issue with the gully. Okay. Uh, thank you Jane, so much. I'm sorry. Appreciate I might suggest Saint Vincent to Paul. St. Saint Vincent de Paul takes food monthly for the church. So you might try them. The stock. Well, right now we have, you know, <clears throat> St. Joachim and Ann is the street outreach that comes every Tuesday and Friday, and that is what they do. Yeah. And I just saw Amy today because it's Tuesday, and she said, yeah, I could talk to my director, and I think we could, sure. you know, but anyway, I, I think there's a lot of people that, but just making sure that you guys are good with whoever. I mean, honestly, I'm going to tell you, Jane, I think you have a way better grip on what people need uh, that's easier for them to fix and use. Um, so, I mean, I don't have any issue. I don't think anybody here has any well, issue I just, with you being able I, to do I talked to Elaine. She'll make up a guideline sheet. Yeah. She'd like to see whatever. and That's, that's you know, fine, yeah. I wasn't aware of any issues, but... No, Until it's not going to be taken that, down. Well, I don't, that's why we don't have We any have food. had no talks of ta removing it or taking yeah. it down, and it is on our Good. property, and we built it. So. Good. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. Thanks, Shane. Thanks, Shane. I'm just completing my notes real quick. Anybody else? All right. Not seeing anybody. We'll move on to Board of Alderman comments. <laughs> Today was uh, the first day of school, so I'd like to wish our entire school district a very successful 2024 school year. Uh, kind of one off here. I'd also like to w uh, wish a very special great niece of mine a uh, great year for freshman year and her sister a great uh, senior year. So there you go, you two. Love you. You want to plug their names also? No, that, I'll be in all kinds of trouble if I plug their names. I, yeah. <laughs> then he may not be the favorite, you know, great Trust uncle. <laughs> it's embarrassing. They'll say that sometimes. <laughs> Any other comments? All right. Next, we'll move on to the presentation of the audit results ending from December 31st, 2023. How's it going? Nice to see you again. Good evening. Good to see everybody. <laughs> um, Are we starting on, page uh, one? on the short cycle this time, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, we, we did the audit again for the city this year. Uh, we issued an unmodified or un unqualified opinion. So b before you move on, oh. I'm just going to say that the, the joke from that is it's it's a little bit thick. So that's why I said it'll be starting on page one. <laughs> we, we charge by the page. So. <laughs> <laughs> we got our money's worth. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, I'm sorry. That's all right. Um, so the financial statements are fairly stated in accordance with GAAP. Um, this year, or this time, um, the financial statements are for the calendar year, 
uh, December 2023. Um, previously, the city had been on a June 30 year end. Um, so things took a little, little longer this year since we switched year ends, had to kind of audit beginning balances and ending balances, and to kind of throw a little extra challenge in, you changed uh, accounting software too. So, um, so it took a little longer, but, uh, but we got there. Um, and, and working with Megan, I think you guys are in good hands going forward. Um, you know, we overcame every, you know, little challenge that we had with, with the, the change in software was really the challenge. Um, so, um, which is not unique to anybody that changes software. Um, so, moving on. Um, the city uh, elected several years ago to participate in the government finance officers um, certificate program for accounting excellence. Um, so you, which is part of the reason why your financial statement is so thick. There's some extra schedules in the back. Um, I mean, the nice thing about it is it gives you a 10 year perspective, whereas governmental financial statements are kind of a one year presentation. So it makes it a little harder to see where you've been without those extra schedules. And then there's some non-financial information in their largest employers, you know, permits issued and some just some other information that that might be interesting to the citizens as well. I think we did that just basically for transparency's sake and trying to keep the public keep it more transparent for people to see if they have issues. Um, so kind of moving ahead to the financial statements, um, if you look on page seven, uh, the, the one place in the financial statements that, that there is a little bit of a comparison current year and prior year is what we call the management discussion and analysis. Um, so, but it's, it's pretty high level, so it's, it's hard to see a lot of the details. Um, so, and because the year end things are a little different, so it compares on the balance sheet side, December 31, 23 to June 30, 2023, because those are the last balance sheets we audited. Um, so, uh, so that you see there's a, so no big change in current assets, uh, capital assets, um, there's some additions, you, you know, the turf um, at the sports field, um, and then you also had some subdivision streets and things donated to the city that you'll maintain. So when that happens, the city recognizes a contribution and then records a fixed asset and then depreciates it over its life in this presentation, um, this government-wide presentation. Uh, Long-term liabilities decreased about 800,000. Um, that's mostly payments on debt, uh, mostly um, interchange and TIF. That's kind of the biggest thing outstanding. Uh, unrestricted net position it is a negative number, and I always kind of talk about this because it seems, you know, a bad thing, um, but it's kind of, so what the genesis of that is, uh, when you issued the TIF bonds and when you built, paid, borrowed money to build the interchange, you spent money and didn't get a fixed asset in exchange, right? So you issue the TIF bonds, that money went to the developer, but that sales tax goes to pay off the bonds. And then same with the interchange, you built the interchange, the, the state's responsible for taking care of that so it's not a city asset. So you took on this debt, made an expenditure, and, and didn't get a fixed asset in exchange. So that kind of makes your net position negative. And as you pay that debt off, then it'll, it'll come back to the positive level it was before. Um, and you know, it looks like you probably are in like three to four years before you have things paid off. Everything is collecting plenty of sales tax to pay the debt without any problem. Um, so that should should flip here real soon. Um, it, I mean, there's about $10 million in outstanding debt for those two items. So if you kind of take that out, then it shows you would probably have a positive $2 million net position. Um, on the bottom of page seven is water and sewer fund. Uh, you know, everything was pretty consistent there. Um, oh wait, cash was, cash was up about $5 million, sorry. Um, and that was because the city issued bonds. 
So that cash came in, it's sitting there until you spent it, and you can see a similar increase in the long-term liabilities. Okay, um, if you go to page nine, um, there's some comparisons. So this would be income statement, um, and this is a it was a little tougher to have apples to apples here. So the first column is the calendar year 23, and the second column will be July 22 to June 23. So there'll be some revenues and expenses that are kind of in both columns. Um, but um, you can see there, there really wasn't big differences in revenues and expenses in those two periods um, in the governmental funds. Uh, water and sewers on page 10. Um, back to the governmental, the grants and contributions were up. Um, that was ARPA money that was spent. So that's revenue when you spend it. Um, and then also when the subdivision streets and stuff are donated, that's considered a contribution. So that's the big things in that category. Um, Total expenses were up about 500,000, which is about 5%. Probably a lot of that increases the spending of the ARPA money. Um, net position increased almost $6 million. Um, and that is kind of the opposite of what happened with the net position is, you know, now you're collecting taxes and you're paying debt down with it, so it's revenue but then it goes to reduce the liability. So that's why net position looks like it's increasing so much because that expenditure was in the past and now the revenue's coming in to pay back that liability. Any questions about any of that? Okay, um, so back to page 10. Um, very little change in the water and sewer. Uh, expenses were up about 14%. Um, most of that was depreciation because you've just been doing a lot of projects and stuff going into service, you know, in, in big dollars and that, as it gets depreciated, that increases your expenses there. Um, jumping ahead to page 20, um, I usually just point out a couple, so this is kind of the presentation that you're used to seeing on a monthly basis, general fund, parks and sewer fund. Um, so I, what I usually kind of point to is the Fund balance in the general fund um, increased by about $550,000 uh, in calendar 23 um, compared to where the fund balance began. After transfers in from parks and capital improvements, which transfer some funds in to pay for expenses that the general fund covers for those funds. So when you look at that fund balance in relation to expenditures, and I usually exclude capital expenditures because those can really vary depending on what the projects are and stuff, um, you have about 90 days of expenses in your fund balance. So, um, and a lot of that is because of, you know, a couple years ago, you guys started that transportation fund as a separate fund, and that pulled some of those funds out of general fund. But going forward, it'll pay for a lot of the capital stuff, so then that won't really be a burden on the general fund going forward. Um, and then the other funds, interchange fund, that fund's just collecting taxes and paying the debt um, down. Yeah, there's about $3.5 million um, in that fund right at the end of the year. The outstanding balance on the debt is about $5 million. So as you can see, you're really close uh, to paying that off. Any questions about any of that? All right, I'll jump way ahead to page 52. Um, and this is a schedule I always kind of talk about because it's probably not something you see on a regular basis. Um, so this is a schedule from loggers um, for the pension. Uh, you guys joined back in 2015. Um, so you're getting close to about 10 years now. Um, the top half of that schedule, oh, did I get the wrong page number? Uh, I want the page before that, sorry. Um, yep, so top half of that schedule uh, is the estimated benefit for 
employees and retirees from the pension, which is about $4.1 million. Then that second section is the amount of money you've paid into the system to pay those benefits. That's about $2.8 million. And then the difference between those is your net pension liability, which is about $1.3 million, um, which is up about $150,000 compared to last year. So a lot of what drives the variations in, in your net pension number is the return on investments. So everything Bloggers does is based on an expected rate of return of 7%. So if you don't achieve that in a year, then you can kind of expect to see your net pension liability increase. And then when you get better than that, then you kind of see that net pension liability decrease. Okay? Um, you know, it, and everything's kind of set up to kind of smooth that as much as possible. The contributions, you know, rate is a percentage of payroll. So they try to smooth that out as much as possible. And there's actually a statutory limit that they can only increase it by 1% in any given year. So you know, if there was a really bad year in the market and the actuaries calculated that your you know, contribution should go from 5% to 8%, they can only increase it to 6% at, you know, in any one year. Now, eventually they'll get up to that amount. Um, but they do a really good job of you know, investing, the returns are really good. Um, you know, all the other cities that I go to have, that have been in it for a long time are all at a net asset. So, you know, since you just recently joined, it'll take you a while to, you know, get to that point. But um, I would feel very comfortable if my pension was in loggers. I'd be really comfortable if I had a pension. <laughs> so you would expect that employer net pension liability to shrink yes in coming yes. years so so one way or another it'll be either be through increased returns good returns or they'll keep bumping that contribution rate up until they they cover that difference so if you look at the next page it shows what the contribution what the actual rate calculates the contribution to be compared to what you've contributed and you can see every year that net difference is zero except for that one year where there's a little thousand dollar difference. Um, so, and then you can also see in that last column, that's your contribution as a percentage of payroll. So I think, let's just say 6.5 um, was what it was last year. And, uh, and, and that's kind of a blended rate. The police and the general government aren't exactly the same. So that's like an average of those two. Um, I mean, with that 18 was one of those 1% jumps. Yes, yes. Um, I, I see why the deficiency was there. The excess. Any, any questions there? No, it's very expensive the way it's laid out. Explains very well. Yeah, and, and when you guys joined, you did, you did made the decision to kind of honor past service. Yeah. So you know, you walk in with a pretty big liability then to try to make up over time. Um, and that's pretty much all I had about the financial statements. Management report is pretty much boilerplate stuff. Um, financial statements are your responsibility. We're issuing an opinion on what you provided us. They include estimates, depreciation, and the pension are probably your two big ones. Um, we didn't have any material audit adjustments. Um, we didn't identify any internal control weaknesses. Um, you know, you guys take controls really seriously, so they're always in really good shape. Um, when we come in, you know, the records are always in really good shape. And like I said, I have total faith that Megan will keep that going for you. And, uh, you know, the fact that we made it through the, <laughs> the accounting and year end change is, is a testament to that. So if you remember in January, I think I cringed pretty hard when I <laughs> talked about that. The next audit will probably be 
a better apples to apples comparison. Yes, yes for yeah, sure. It's going fiscal, it's, we're out of the fiscal. Yeah, so it'll be calendar to calendar, and uh, yeah, then going forward should and be. So that will be next year about this time? About the, yeah, and honestly, I should be here probably in May or June instead. Uh, like I said, the, the changes just made it drag out a little longer. Um, you know, we usually probably start around April and usually by the end of May, we have a draft and we'll come in June and present. I've, I've seen other audits on different things and I'll tell you, um, every time you present it, it's easy to read, easier to read. I won't say it's easy to read, <laughs> it's easier to read and you do make it very understandable so that we can at least Ask we don't have to, yeah questions. we don't have to ask ten thousand questions we can pretty much draw a lot of the conclusions from what what you presented I, do I appreciate, appreciate that. that I've been to a few presentations on the other side too and you know some places like to go page by page yeah. and uh, you know ten minutes in you're nobody's even listening to you anymore so no, I, 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 I try to condense it with while still giving you that. as much information as I can. So you've hit the points we I think we've been asking more about, um, especially with the loggers. It was it was a lot easier to follow and understand understand to a degree. Good. What it is so. Thank you. Uh, any other questions? No. no. All right. I'll uh, entertain a motion to accept the audit results as they've been submitted. So moved. Second. Motion made by Alderman Rowmaker, second by Alderman Lang. Roll call vote. Alderman Schultz? Yes. Alderman Crump? Yes. Alderman Quarter? Yes. Alderman Romaker? Yes. Alderman Lang? Yes. Motion passes 5 to 0. Thank you, sir. Thank you very Thank much. You very much. Thank you. Next, we'll hear from City Administrator Brandy Walters. Good evening. The first thing that I have for you tonight is I'm requesting your approval for out of state training to send Megan Wilder and John Struckoff both to a conference seminar in Milwaukee. Um, this is basically to go into more detailed classes for our new online software, BSNA. Um, I believe that this could be beneficial for all of our staff, actually. They could bring back that knowledge to us by just sending two people. Um, this cost is $4,031.02, <coughs> and that would cover everything, their hotels, their airfare, their um, the conference, and everything for both of them. I don't mind that, but Megan, you have to videotape if John does the uh, Laverne and Shirley dance down the street. <laughs> or maybe they're not old enough to know. Probably, that. They probably have no <laughs> maybe, 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 um, maybe, maybe, maybe they don't want to. Please don't bring up Andy Griffith. No, <laughs> if he starts drinking Pepsi and milk, then you have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> I, am, I guess I'm getting old. I, yeah. don't know. I, mean, I would have never days, brought that up. I remember those days. <laughs> I, anybody have any objection to it? No. no. None. All right, I'll entertain a motion to approve the out-of-state training for John and Megan on October 13th through the 16th, correct? Okay. So moved. Second. Motion made by Alderman Crump, second by Alderman Lang. Roll call vote. Alderman Crump? Yes. Alderman Quarter? Yes. Alderman Romaker? Yes. Alderman Lang? Yes. Alderman Schultz? Yes. Motion passes 5-0. to zero. The next thing I have for you is I emailed you guys a couple invites today. One is for an Eagle Scout Court of Honor that you've been invited to. It's a ceremony that's going to be held at the Warrington Pool Park Pavilion. This is for um, a gentleman who actually, his name is Noah Klein, and he did an agility course out at our dog park for his Eagle Scout project, and they're doing a ceremony to honor that. Um, that is on September 8th at 1 p.m. You have also been invited to the Agape Gala, and that is on Saturday, September 7th from 5.30 to 10.30 at the Mary Lou Community Center. <coughs> and I've sent both of those to you in an email. If you'd like for me to RSVP, just let me know. And the last thing I have for you is our planning meeting. Our annual planning meeting is scheduled for Wednesday, August 28th at 8 a.m. 8 a.m. here in this building, and breakfast and lunch will be provided. What was that last date again, please? The planning meeting? September 28th. No. No. August. August, August 28th. August 28th. Right? August 28th. Next Wednesday. Next Wednesday. Okay. Here in town. Thursday, August right, check 28th. Check your calendar. <laughs> All day. I thought you just said Yeah, Wednesday, August 28th. 
Island area. I know there's so many dates flying back and forth. I was getting a little confused. I was say there for a while. We were trying to pan, pan out so many things. I got lost for a little bit myself. No, I think I've got that on my calendar, so. Thank you. Anything else? That's it. Any Thank questions you. for Brandy? Well, thanks, Brandy. We'll move on along. Next, we'll hear from Director of Operations, John Struckoff. Good evening. Uh, first item I have for you tonight is the monthly admin report. I just had a chance to review that. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. I don't think I do. Any questions on that? No. Nope. Nope. All right. Next thing I have for you to, tonight is uh, we're wanting to dispose of some um, office equipment that has been in storage for many years. Most of it's been busted and just been in storage. We've never gotten rid of it, so we just need approval to get rid of Just clean up some storage areas so we can have more room for more storage. So clean it up. Questions on that? It's in a motion to approve to dispose of the miscellaneous office furniture and storage. I get Which made by, was it Alderman Schultz? Yes. And then seconded by Alderman okay. Lang. Yep. Roll call vote. Alderman Corder? Yes. Alderman Roemaker? Yes. Alderman Lang? <coughs> yes. Alderman Schultz? Yes. Alderman Crump? Yes. Motion passes 5-0. to zero. I just want to clarify, most of that stuff will not be sold. It's too right, far. Just destroyed. Trash. Just yeah. disposed of. Yeah, yep. I just want to clarify that. Uh, the last item I have for you tonight is uh, um, an agreement with SAK Construction to do uh, CIP lining at multiple different locations throughout the city. I just need approval or if you have any questions on that. Can we just real briefly go, I mean, as briefly yeah. as you can, the, the CIPP like lining? Like so they, they put a liner inside the sewer line to create, or well, to create a new pipe inside the old pipe to reduce infiltration of... I'm not doing that more for us, it's just general public, yep. so we can describe it again. I know we, we've spoke about it at length, but yep. um, some people that tune into the, the YouTube don't, so I appreciate that. And any questions for that? None. Yep. All right, I'll entertain a motion for first reading of bill number 54-24. So moved. Second. Motion made by the quarter, second by the rulemaker. An ordinance authorizing execution of agreement between SAK Construction LLC and the City of Warrenton for 2024 CIPP lining project. I'll entertain a motion for the second reading of bill number 54-24. Second. Motion made by Alderman Schultz, second by Alderman Lang. An ordinance authorizing execution of an agreement between SAK Construction LLC and the City of Warrenton for 2024 CIPP lining project. We'll call vote. Alderman Romaker. Yes. Alderman Lang. Yes. Alderman Schultz. Yes. Alderman Crump. Yes. Alderman Quarter. Yes. Bill passes five to zero. Just a reminder that Fall Festival is uh, one month away. So we're going to have 109 spots sold for vendors this year. It'll be the most vendors we've ever had, and everybody's looking forward to it. So September 21st, correct? September 21st. Starts at noon. <coughs> That's all I have. Thanks, John. Um, can you write something down for me? Because I'll forget. Mm -hmm. to do this later um, next year there was a young gentleman I heard that's from here and he's moved to Nashville just like to look into him uh, last name's Day I think it's Alex Day yep. really good singer I know and, uh, yep. loves being back here at his hometown and um, I think it maybe not the main but maybe a, a side stage yep. be a really good thing to have a hometown guy come back here and sing I think yep. um, I sat down and I actually played nine holes of golf with him very nice gentleman. Um, I was amazed just by how respectful and nice he was and how much he just loved being back home. Yep. So, Yeah, we'll definitely look into it. Thank you. I do appreciate it. I, I, like I said, I know. I'm not trying to plug it. It's just I know I'll forget. Yep. Uh, yeah, then, we normally try to get a local band <coughs> to come for the I think he'd probably band East love East. it, and I'd love to plug somebody who's from here and yep. has a heart for here. So, uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Did you, That's all that I That was it? Well, thank you. Anybody have any questions for him? Nope. Appreciate it, John. All right. Next, we'll hear from Finance Officer Megan Welder. Good evening, I got it down now. <laughs> <laughs> you can look and look down, but I got it. <laughs> if, if I if don't, Schultz will tell me. <laughs> As if you didn't get enough with the numbers a few minutes ago, uh, here's the June financials for you. Okay. Uh, sales 
taxes again are coming in um, above projection for the general fund, 107,000 above budget, transportation, 35,000 above budget, and the interchange fund, 73,000 above budget. Services is 47,000 above uh, projected revenue, uh, mainly for trash and pool related transactions. Again, with the other um, revenue is mainly due to the sale on uh, the house on Willow Road. Licenses, we are over anticipated revenues by 58,000, mainly due to single family and multifamily residence uh, building permits. And then lastly on revenue, <clears throat> water and sewer, we are over expected revenues, 278,000 year to date with the main drivers being the sewer connection fees and the industrial sewer receipts. For expenses, the pool is under 82,000 due to vacant positions, as well as chemical and repairs year to date. Grounds and maintenance under about 25,000 due to vacant positions and timing on seasonal workers. And street is under uh, 190,000 due to unused funds for the budgeted traffic study, as well as under on some equipment, vehicle repairs and maintenance and snow removal supplies. And lastly, water and sewer. Um, Water is under budget, $101,000, uh, mainly due to salaries and related expenses, um, electric and gas, and pump repairs. And then sewer is under $106,000 uh, for budgeted, uh, I'm sorry, for salaries and related expenses due to a vacant position, uh, consulting engineer expenses, and pump repairs. On the financials. Any questions on those? No. 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 Thank you. And then the next item I had was the the tax rate. Have we discussed at the public? Yeah, that okay. We discussed at the public hearing. Yeah, I don't know. Does anybody need her to go over that again? No. I'm, I'm good. I'm good on that. Um, you just need it as a bill so we can introduce it as an ordinance. Correct. Yes. Okay. I'll entertain a motion for the first reading of Bill Number 50-24. So moved. Second. Motion made by Alderman Quarter, second by Alderman Lang. An ordinance levying and imposing a tax for the calendar and fiscal year of 2024 for general, municipal, and public park purposes. I'll entertain a motion for a second reading of Bill Number 50-24. So moved. Second. Motion made by Alderman Lawmaker, second by Alderman Crump. An ordinance levying and imposing a tax for the calendar and fiscal year of 2024 for general, municipal, and public park purposes. Roll call vote. Alderman Lang? Yes. Alderman Schultz? Yes. Alderman Crump? Yes. Alderman Quarter? Yes. Alderman Rowmaker? Yes. Bill passes 5 to 0. Any other questions? No. Mm -hmm. All good. Thank you. Thank you very much, Megan. Thank you. Next, we're from Building Commissioner Mike Cross. Good evening, Mayor and Board. We have my monthly report. We know that we have already issued 40 housing permits this year. I've got four more sitting in the office waiting for them to be paid for. So that will bring us up to a total of 44 so far. Uh, we've been by the baseball training facility that's starting to come along quite nicely now. So they should be another month or so and they might be having a little action there been down 47 you see ELS is starting to clear property back there behind the fueler and you know, getting that out. program for 60 units getting ready to go into there <coughs> and as usual Ed's still marching up towards highway double a um, all the way from the service road um, it's just amazing um, things at Pickney are going very well and things at Walnut Hollow are going very well so it's been a good year so far that's great knock on wood let's keep it going Yes, yes. I do that right there. Any questions for Mike? Uh, no. Thank you. You're welcome. Next, we're here from Chief Police Larry Eller. Good evening. The only item I have for you tonight is my monthly report. <clears throat> if you don't have any questions on that, I would like to take this opportunity to remind everyone, as Mr. Struckoff said, uh, the fall festival is on September 21st, which means we will close the roads at 6 a.m on the 21st, which means please do not park on Main Street on the night of the 20th going into the 21st or any of the side streets between Main Street and Oak Street and Main Street and Walton Street. 
So how many how many problems did we have last year or two with parking on Main Street? Have we had some issues? I would like to say that my reminders help out, but well, I'll, I'll go with every, that. Every year it's about the same. There's three or four that we can't get a hold of, and they wind up getting towed down here to our parking lot. So would it help? I mean, at minimal, can we maybe print a flyer to be able to put on there a week beforehand of a reminder? Just put on the windshields of some of the cars we see staying overnights. Um, just to try and help out, then maybe we'll get a one that's free of <laughs> no toes. <laughs> if night shift is not busy on the night before, we can try to get them out there earlier than six. Well, I was going to say, or we could talk to Randy about maybe being able to print out minimal of you know 20 or 30 or whatever it is to be able to put on there uh, generically of hey just a reminder we don't want to tow your car but we do need it moved by this date and we this time. Uh, we don't like knocking on people's doors at 6 a.m. no it's not fun their car, so <laughs> it usually gets the grouchiness besides the fact that you wear a badge and you're not a anyone else <laughs> anyone else would be welcomed you're not so welcome when they open the door sometimes <laughs> unfortunately so, so um, no if we can maybe do that to be great if it would be I mean I, I can't see it costing a whole bunch we could probably even make them ourselves and be able to post it maybe to help out um, with it not being so harsh on hard on your guys to be able to have to tell them and do that and I'll give the same reminder again in September so great sounds awesome other than that that's all I have any other questions no okay Excellent. Thanks, Chief. Thanks, Chief. Next, we'll hear from Director of Planning and Development, Tim Burks. Uh, good evening, board members. You have a copy of my monthly report for in July. Uh, no new businesses for that month. Do um, you have any questions for me? I don't think so. No. Go ahead. All right. So the first item on the agenda is the... Um, Public comment, public hearing uh, policy. It's the policy we talked about in the meeting. It's to uh, help keep the uh, the meetings going smooth and giving giving everybody their time to to speak. So, and that motion passed uh, planning and zoning with seven to one with two absence. Okay. Do you have any questions on that one? I do not. Does anybody else? No. You need that. Is that? We need a motion. To we need a motion to, to go ahead and adopt that. <coughs> I'll entertain a motion to accept the revised public hearing policy as submitted. So moved. Second. Who do you? Who do you want to take a second? Because you both said at the same time. I'll take it. Okay. Motion made by Alderman Quarter, seconded by Alderman Lang. Roll call vote. Alderman Schultz. Yes. Alderman Crump? Yes. Alderman Quarter? Yes. Alderman Roemaker? Yes. Alderman Lang? Yes. Motion passes 5 to 0. Okay. Uh, the next project is the Westwood Farms Plat 1 Record Plat Phase 1, SUBD 125. Uh, developer is Westwood Farms Development, LLC. Location is 1106 Steinhagen Road. Uh, total area on that is 21.82 acres. It's currently zoned R2 medium density a residential family. Uh, the reason for the uh, record plat is to build the uh, phase one, uh, 37 lots out of the total 66 single family lots approved on January 16th, 2024 um, by the board with ordinance number 2834. Um, the Code compliance, uh, per my report, all criteria for the record plat has been met and are consistent with our current codes. And this was presented at the PNZ and the motion passed eight to zero with two absence. And we do have the engineer here if you have any questions on it. Tim, will they have to come back when they want plat two to start and get reapproved? Yes, for the second phase. Okay. How many total units are we talking there? there that's a total of 66. You're six. talking with plat one and plat two, correct? Plat one and plat two, yeah. Now they are talking about, I know we, t I don't know why this was a big topic, but the sign out in the front, I know that's been discussed. I've, I've received several phone calls just to make sure that they are definitely putting signs out indicating the subdivision. I, I know we talked about that when he first came, the developer did. Signs? Are you talking about the city signs? No, or? no. Uh, like 
there was something that he was going to do with incorporating the sub name of the subdivision and have a sign at the very front. Does anybody else remember him talking about that? I remember something about a sign. And I know that was discussed in planning and zoning as well. Yeah. And I know it's not a big deal. I'm just asking because it was asked of me. The engineers here can come on. Come on forward. <coughs> if you would just state your name whenever you come on up. Mike Miners with St. Charles Engineering, 801 South 5th Street, St. Charles, Missouri. It's a monument sign that he's going to put at the, one of go. the entrances okay. to show the name of the subdivision. So Yeah, it just got brought up again of what it was going to look like, and I thought, I mean, I get why people are concerned with it. I'm yep. not so sure the board gets that concerned with it as much as making sure that the plat and everything else works out for us, but um, I understand their concern with it. and. I don't know, I guess if it would ever could be submitted to what a rendering would look like of that, okay, then maybe it would permit satisfy them. You'll need to get a permit from Mike. It's typical. You see it in all the subdivisions, and they right. the subdivision Great. as you go by. That's it. Is, I is mean, there, people are just concerned. Is, uh, is, is there any plan to put the street through to Dogwood Drive? Uh, it looks like it ends. It, yes. It dead ends right now, right? Right, right now. It, it's shown on our plans to connect to Dogwood. Oh, it to connects dog, yeah. to Dogwood. Yes. Okay, it will connect to Dogwood Drive. There's, okay. Is there like going to be three entrances uh, or just two? There's two. Or, th or three roads. Two main ones we're connecting uh, to Pin Oak. Uh, Pin Oak to okay. Dogwood. Right. Up going out to Dogwood, and then there's a future stub going out, out to, as to well. the east. Okay, but that goes in. Doesn't that go into those uh, condos? Well, to, that's that's the Pin Oak. South? That's Pin well, Oak. That's but that's undeveloped ground to the east that we're stubbing a road out right. to that okay. in that direction as well. Okay, behind where those are that you're talking. And then about. there's one also is where the old house used to sit. I don't know if you. Well, sit. there's two of them uh, that that'll, that'll go to the north. Uh, you know, off okay. Steinhagen, uh -huh. and those will be the main subdivision main, okay. entrances. Okay, that, that's what I was looking for. And then we'll connect the Pin Oak, okay. as I mentioned, and then future c connection for another subdivision to back the east, to the back. whenever that's developed. Okay. Got it. Okay, Excellent. thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Any other questions on that? No. That's going to be a bill as well. Uh, I'll entertain a motion for the first reading of bill number 51-24. So moved. Second. Motion made by Alderman Schultz, seconded by Alderman Lang. An ordinance of the City of Warrenton, Missouri approving the final plat of the subdivision known as Westwood Farms Plat 1. I'll entertain a motion for a second reading of bill number 51-24. So moved. moved. Second. Uh, motion made by Alderman Rowmaker, seconded by Alderman Corder. An ordinance of the City of Warrenton, Missouri approving the final plat of the subdivision known as Westwood Farms Plat 1. We'll call vote. Alderman Crump? Yes. Alderman Quarter? Yes. Alderman Romaker? Yes. Alderman Lang? Yes. Alderman Schultz? Yes. Bill passes 5 to 0. Thank you. Uh, the next one is the MK Ranch Bar and Grill conditional use um, CUP 98 and site plan SP 175. Uh, the developer is MK Ranch. Location is the shops at Warrington. It's on the northeast uh, end of the complex. Um, this conditional use and site plan uh, for the bar and grill. Uh, the building size is 9,200 square feet. It, zoning is C3, uh, highway commercial. Uh, the grill is a permitted use there in C3. Uh, however, the bar requires the conditional use permit. Uh, the uh, code compliance according to the report, all criteria for the site plan and conditional use permit has been met and it's consistent with our current code. Um, it was presented at the planning and zoning meeting. The motion passed for the conditional use 8 to 0 with 2 absent and for the site plan it passed 8 to 0 with 2 absent. The applicant should have been here. He was notified. I'm not sure why he's not. Are there any questions on this? Is, is M&K Ranch a, a chain? Is it a no? No. no. It's oh, it's, it's just an individual. Spot that was supposed to go up on north or south yeah, This was the that? same one that was going to go down by Bruni Parkway in 47. Oh, okay. But they, I think the only, the oh, big change they made is no sand volleyball court. No outside at this time, so. No, yeah. at this time or. 
down there, I don't think they have room for anything, so. Okay, an asphalt. <laughs> <laughs> asphalt. Skin up your knees pretty bad on that asphalt. <laughs> Any questions on that? No. No. I know. Entertain a motion for the first reading of bill number 52-24. So moved. Second. Motion made by McCrump, seconded by one recorder. An ordinance approving a <coughs> conditional use permit to allow a proposed bar and grill located at 1,000 shops at Wharton's, at Wharton's Suite 2. I'll entertain a motion for the second reading of bill number 52-24. So moved. Second. Motion made by Alman Schultz, seconded by Alman Lang. An ordinance approving a conditional use permit to allow a proposed bar and grill located at 1,000 shops at Warrington Suite 2. Roll call vote. Alman Quarter. Yes. Alderman Rowmaker? Yes. Alderman Lang? Yes. Alderman Schultz? Yes. Alderman Crump? Yes. Bill passes 5 to 0. I'll entertain a motion for the first reading of Bill number 53 24. So moved. Second. Motion made by Alderman Quarter, second by Alderman Rowmaker. An ordinance of the City of Warrington approving a site plan for a tract of land located at 1000 Shops at Warrington Suite 2. I'll entertain a motion for the second reading of Bill number 53 24. So moved. Second. Motion made by Alderman Lang, second by Alderman Crump. An ordinance of the City of Warrington approving a site plan for a tract of land located at 1000 Shops at Warrington Suite 2. Roll call vote. Alderman Rowmaker? Yes. Alderman Lang? Yes. Alderman Schultz? Yes. Alderman Crump? Yes. Alderman Quarter? Yes. Bill passes 5 to 0. And that's uh, all I have tonight, gentlemen. What's that? That's all I have tonight. Okay, thank Tim, you. Tim, I've got a quick question. Okay. Do we have any. Does this gentleman give us any dates on hopefully opening or not? I don't have a date. I know they've been down doing uh, work in it, so he's going to be busy because everybody asks me. Yeah, he's he's been <laughs> well, busy ever since he submitted all the he, paperwork. They've got to put in a full kitchen, if I understand yeah. it, because that was the Nike. that was the Nike store. Yeah. So they, yeah. yeah, I think he's got a lot of modifications to go through. So you try to find that information out for you. I don't think there were bathrooms in there. No, I don't think so. Well, maybe for employee, but it wasn't yeah, yeah, it like what does. you're going to use for a bar. So. Right. So. Thank you, Tim. Appreciate it. All right. I'll entertain a motion to go to closed session pursuant of sections 610.021, uh, State RISMO uh, Legal Counsel. So moved. Second. Second. Motion made by Alderman Crump, second by Alderman Lang. Roll call vote. Alderman Lang. Yes. Alderman Schultz. Yes. Alderman Crump. Yes. Alderman Quarter. Yes. Alderman Romaker. Yes. Motion passes five to zero, and we are so adjourned. Thank you.